All right, good morning everyone and welcome to Crash Talk episode 5. Today we have with us none other than Shalin Balsuria. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Shalin. It means a lot to us and the community and what we're trying to do. Um, to, give you, to give you a bit more on Trash Talk itself and what we're trying to do here, uh, we're encouraging people to come early morning, uh, work out and then clean up thereafter. And by that we're trying to build a sustainable model to keeping this beach clean as well as um, developing it to become a tourist hotspot. So we really take, uh, we really value your time here and we want to start off by asking a few questions and then we'll um, head up and clean up a bit of the beach also. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, Shalin, so our first question uh, is a common one with all our guests. We like to ask them uh, what their morning routine is like, um, how important is it um, for them. So um, in terms of your morning routine, care to share? What My morning routines vary a lot because I travel quite a bit because yep. of work. But uh, when I'm in Colombo, usually three days a week morning is gym. Mm -hmm. uh, come back home, I, I, I'm, I don't do breakfast. Okay. Um, um, so there's this whole fasting thing I do. Yeah. So intermittent fasting. Intermittent huh? fasting. Okay. So uh, come in, just water stuff like that. Yep. Get on my phone. Fortunately, unfortunately, right. go through the emails, do that kind of thing, um, the newspapers, yep. and then head to work. Sweet. And also in terms of like you know when you need to get into a certain uh, state of mind for work, is are there any routines that you look at in terms of building yourself up to that, or is that something now you've gotten used to? I think it's uh, it's built into the routine where, where, where while I'm going through my days uh, routine, it, you, you know, I'm kindly kind of arranging things up in my head um, yeah. right from the start, uh, time you wake up and you're still in bed for a little while. So it's nothing that I sit down and make an right. effort to do, but it just happens. But the right. funny thing is we're here yeah. and growing up, I, I grew up very close by yeah. and at the age of maybe five, six, my mom used to come here every morning okay. before, before sunrise, like 5.30. Okay. And as a kid, I used to come with her. Oh, wow. So we used to do this whole walk up and down the beach and, and head home. So oh. it's, it's a lot of nostalgia here and it's wow, you know, very close to home. That's amazing. For our second question, um, you've been one of the most uh, successful entrepreneurs of our current generation. Uh, you've been able to take a family homegrown brand to the international arena and you've been so successful in it. As a result, you've created a band um, that is known right around the world. Um, it's taking Sri Lanka's brand itself uh, forward. Any advice you would have for young entrepreneurs, anyone with their own brands trying to take it to the international arena? Okay. Um, Firstly, with, with family brands, I, uh, how it happened was I started working for my mom's business and then me and my brother conceptualized this. Yeah. Uh, but what was important there is when I did come into my mom's business, um, I came in right at the bottom. Pretty mm -hmm. much I came out to university, I joined as a management trainee, not as a manager or a director or anything. Yeah, yeah. So it gave me that whole spectrum to learn. To learn. Um, and, and get somewhere, really understand the industry. So it came, when it came to a point of us setting up our own brand, there was a lot of knowledge to draw from. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of knowledge from the industry to draw from and a lot of experience as well. So big, big message for young people coming into family businesses. Don't, don't go start as managers. Don't go start as, as so directors uh, and parents. Uh, the older generation, make sure your young ones start, start early and learn through. That's yep. what we are doing with our next generation as well and it's, it's proving to be uh, very, very good. Yep. In terms of what entrepreneurs can do is, one big thing for me is obviously co continuous learning. Yep. So learn from everyone, learn from the industry, learn from your competitors, learn from other brands in the spaces mm -hmm. and keep learning because in, in today's digital age, everything is shorter, the attention spans are shorter, yep. the, the cycles are shorter, the trends are shorter, so you have to keep evolving. Mm -hmm. So if you want to create a great brand, you have to keep learning. Right. Of course. The other thing is uniqueness, and uniqueness comes from authenticity. Mm -hmm. Your brand needs a story, it needs to be unique, it needs to be able to stand out. So if, you're, if you want to build an international brand, make sure it has those attributes that, and, and tell it, tells a story that makes it stand out. And people want to know more than what the product does or what the service does. They want to know things about behind the scenes. How sustainable are you? Yeah. How good are you to your employees? How do you work with the environment? How do you work with wildlife? Um, what's the story behind each product? So that, that authenticity that comes from there as well plays a huge role in today's day and age in building brands. Nice, thank you very much. That's really valuable insight. 
Um, in terms of going international, was that uh, something a bit more difficult because there weren't that many brands locally that had gone international? Or was that something that you were kind of looking at from the very start with Sparcelon? See, Sparcelon was conceptualized to go international. Okay. See, the reason we conceptualized Sparcelon is working for my mom's company. Your mom's Sri company being Janet. Janet. Yes. Um, Sri Lanka was still at war. Yep. Um, it was also a mass market uh, business, so trying to take that overseas wasn't working because unless you produce yeah. the product in a given country when it's mass market, you don't have enough yeah. margins to play with. So the whole deal was to create a brand that had the legs to go international. So it was Barcelona's purpose built to go international. Right. Thankfully, as we were launching the brand, the war ended, which created this whole tourism environment wow. here and uh, really opened up our economy as well to brands like this. So we, we were able to do a lot of work in Sri Lanka as well. Nice. Perfect timing as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so we are at Tuvalu's Beach. We're cleaning up with Shalim Barisuri from uh, Spasilon. Um, Shalim, for our next question, what we'd like to ask is: Spasilon is one of the largest retailers in the country. You all are not only in Sri Lanka but exporting right around the world. Um, the classic problem we have is primarily due to the consumption of, uh, of uh, our very own consumption, basically. And what we'd like to know is: what, are, what is Spasilon doing going forward? Um, to kind of reduce the plastic that you are using and how sustainable it is and how soon you are look to kind of do this. Okay, so PET is widely used in cosmetics for a lot of other uh, products. There isn't much alternative at this stage that's safer uh, yeah, because you look, you have to look at, at the hygiene of packing as well. Mm -hmm. But what we are trying to do is cut down as much as possible. We've already cut down our PET by about 30%. Okay. By going into glass, what we're doing with whatever PET we're using is we're trying to take all the PET back, uh, and recycle into pellets, and then repurpose into yarn and brushes and so on. And you'll also collect PET at your outlet. Yes. Uh, we collect PET at our outlet. We give up. We incentivize people to bring in PET uh, to the outlet store by giving them discounts. Yep. Um, in terms of uh, moving forward. In the next two years, we want to cut up PET uh, consumption by a further 50% um, by bringing more glass, more aluminum, things like that. We're also looking at a PET that is already recycled, okay. so that we're not, not adding to it. Um, and looking at lots of newer, newer technologies as well. Some of these, we're waiting for it to be a full so that it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even in the larger sense, in our production, well, we're trying to reduce our carbon footprint as much as possible. We are increasing the use of renewable energy. Um, we are uh, harvesting is sustainable. We make sure that we work with only people who sustainably harvest. Um, we, we are involved in a lot of conservation projects. So we try to give back as much as possible. Yeah. We are very much aware that we need to take care of the world we live in yeah. and function in, and, and we are quite conscious about it. So even it, when it comes to spreading awareness, that's something we are very much on on board with them. Awesome, thank you so much. And in terms of, um, you know, making that change, um, you're probably one of the largest brands, so you'll probably see that scale. Is there still a huge barrier uh, in terms of cost that you have to kind of overcome in terms of changing, getting out of plastic? Is that something that you're still face? And is it, do you see that being a barrier going forward as well? Cost is a barrier because there, there isn't, uh, there isn't anything that's safe enough to use that close to plastic or even cheaper than plastic, the cost is always going to be a barrier. So some part of that cost will eventually be passed on to the consumer, but I think consumers are starting to realize that as well. And the consumers themselves are demanding this brand. So it's, I mean, people are coming to understand, so I don't think moving forward is going to be a problem. The more mass market products are the ones that are going to have, have problems with it. People do come to us and talk to us about refilling stations and things like that. So we looked at several one, several of those. So when it comes to detergents and things like that, you can do it. But when it comes to things that you're putting on your body, you will be very, very careful because that, that container that comes from the that could be yeah. dangerous. So there are lots of things to consider. Yeah. Although on the surface, it looks like a good, good solution. Right. But we are looking at yeah. everything possible. We are very plugged into the industry, so we are looking at a lot of new tech as well. So hopefully, moving forward, uh, we'll have far more uh, alternatives to 
SDP and SDP. Great. Great stuff to hear from companies within our own country, kind of pushing the way forward. Uh, In our last question, you actually said that you and your mom used to come to this beach when you were younger. Um, Palambo doesn't have that many beaches. Yeah. Um, you yourself having been to this beach growing up um, and seeing the state of it, remembering what it was like then and what it's like today. Today it's actually quite dirty again. Um, what are your thoughts about us, uh, within, just within our own communities, you know, coming together to sort of clean these public spaces that are available for all of us to utilize? Um, what do you think we should be doing? Um, how important is it, would you say, in your opinion, that we look after our environment around us? Um, no, absolutely, I mean, we all need to contribute. It's very easy to point fingers and say the government should be doing this or this authority should be doing this when these yeah. are public spaces and yeah. we are the public. We need to contribute. We, yeah. I mean, we enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, enjoy it responsibly. Uh, okay. Part of the problem is people who come to beaches leaving their trash behind. Yep. The second thing is, of course, get together as groups, get together as families even, come out, show the kids what it's all about, get that good habit going. Yeah. Um, you, and you were telling me the story about the little mural, the big mural on that, which is, which yeah. is a little bit morbid, but it, yeah, this could be our future. <laughs> exactly. Um, where this guy is gathering up the last bit of coral in an in in environment that's pretty much dying. dying. And so, so if we don't do our part, yeah. that's where that's we're going to end up. Out. So uh, great initiative by you guys, gathering yeah. people together, yeah. getting people and giving this a voice giving yep. well a beach voice, voice which yeah. is my beach as well <laughs> so thank you for that great. and um, I think it's a great platform and platforms like this will bring more young people to it get yep. more young people coming Come. to the beach we're heading to Marissa and all these exactly, places exactly. and we have this on, in our backyard that yeah. we are taking care of so yeah. We need to come out and do do our part. Yeah. Organizations around this need to do our part. Residents need to do our part. And uh, look, we are in an island. We need to, we need to uh, protect our coastline. So true. Um, so Charlene, you all are one of the largest brands in the country, and like you said, you all are always looking to give back to the community as well uh, through your own projects, through partnering with other people's projects. We actually also um, go involved. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to get on this, but we are looking at doing stuff in future. But for the audience here, the whole this whole thing is basically a model. We want to show people that you can do it anywhere around the country. It doesn't just have to be Velavat Beach. Um, from a brand's perspective, um, you know, how, how, how important is it to you all that there are small groups that are just doing stuff that kind of lay the groundwork that then you all can kind of help in with? Um, Look, it's fantastic that groups like you guys are doing this because it, number one, it engages communities in, in different areas yeah, and yeah. communities coming together means they take pride in what they're doing. So the brands can come in and help fund and so on. But when brands are doing it themselves, they can go spend a lot of money, do stuff, but then there's no ownership yeah. that comes from the community that keep it going. So but what you guys have done is fantastic because you've got the communities, you've got them working and, and you have the opportunity to work with multiple brands on an ongoing basis, yeah. which is fantastic. So if many communities like this build around the coastline, exactly. oh, that'll be fantastic. And finally, Shalin, thank you so much for coming and being a part of the show. Uh, it means a lot to us and we really look forward to working with you guys on the beach as well. Brilliant, thank you for having me and keep doing the great work you guys are doing, so well done. Thank you very much. What's your excuse? Thank you so much for following the Trash Talk series. Uh, we've seen amazing progress around the entire way from the time we started to now. We've been able to accomplish so much. We'd like to thank Canon, our first partners on the entire program for coming on board, sponsoring the Trash Talk segment. Uh, really did help us a lot going forward. Canon Metropolitan, thank you so much. And to all the other personalities that came, upon the, came on the show as well. Uh, it really helped us spread the message going forward. Uh, we've had amazing interaction on our Instagram page, so if you want to get involved with this project going forward, please do head over there and check it out there. 
If you are interested in sponsoring this series going forward, we'd love to do this. However, there are costs involved. So if your brand is one that's interested in taking this forward, please do make sure to reach out to us. Um, and lastly, we'd love to encourage all of you guys to go out there and do this. All we've got is a camera and a phone. You just need to get um, people behind it and then eventually the brands will follow and it's really amazing to see what can be done. Uh, this is just one tiny example of what could be done here in Sri Lanka by our own communities and we really encourage all of you guys to do the same. So thank you very much for following and make sure you follow us on Instagram to see how we take this beach forward.